It's a crazy place. It's weird. I hate the Yeah. Thing. So tell me, Carrie. Um, so I can't see you. So it looks like crap, so I just have my little thing up. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so 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 what's happening with you now? Tell t first, how about just introduce yourself because the idea here is to get this out to people who aren't aware of you know what's happening, who you are, what you're doing, you know, all that sort of thing to have a wider audience to expand out, not just like the same people in the cannabis community that we all know and everybody sees each other and it's like oh yeah you know same thing every day right, right. so if we I can yeah yeah so let's so just to, uh interview <coughs> yourself and then uh you know just, just tell me what's going on okay um my name is carrie cannon i am co-director of the international women's cannabis coalition and I also advocate for Washington State plant, Federal Plant Prisoner Lance Floors Release. Um, I pretty much dub myself the, I'm the nobody who decided to be the somebody to do something about it. And that something was to help bring greater public awareness to Washington State Federal Plant Prisoner Lance Floors case and to you know rally the troops to help support his release so what were you doing what were you doing before before lance glory say you were the nobody who's decided to be somebody and do something about it um but you were doing things before that right i was I, i've been with the international women's cannabis coalition for a number of years since the founding i was the uh california chapter leader that started the chapter there, took over Washington State when I moved up here five years ago as there was no chapter leader. Um, when I was back in Southern California, I pretty much led the efforts in Apple Valley to first to stop and then to try to overturn the ban on medical dispensaries there, which unfortunately didn't happen. We didn't have enough public support for that. It seems to be a problem a lot of times people don't want to get out and do anything even if they support it they'll just still sit at home true i had so many people that you know i'd be like i need you to come to this council meeting or make these phone calls write a letter come to this protest and they'd be like i support it but you got this and one person can't do it right yeah it's impossible but you are doing things now that one person can do and anybody can do, right? And if they, if they decided that they wanted to follow along and do the same kinds of things, that would be pretty easy for them to replicate, wouldn't it? Very easy. And using just simple, easy methods and things that most of us have access to. Certainly anybody who will be watching this, you know, your phone, your social media, a piece of paper, a, a pen to write a sign, a couple minutes of your time to make a phone call or email, it can make a huge difference. And so, and so what, what kind of things are you doing? So say you make a sign. So what do you do with your sign? Say you make a sign that says <clears throat> freelance glor, because you mentioned lens. Mm -hmm. So, um, Freelance, what, what would somebody do? If they got a sign, what, what should they do with their, what should they do with their sign? Um, well, I would recommend taking a photo of themselves, a selfie, or have somebody else take their photo of them holding that sign, and then uploading that sign to social media. Uh, maybe include a call to action that I have out there, or you know, emailing the White House in support of this pending clemency petition or just an article about his injustice or just the fact that he's serving a 10 year federal prison sentence for legal medical cannabis in Washington state. Those photos, what I do with them is I turn them into photo collages and I, I work pretty closely with Lance's mother, Tracy. We 
send those collages to Lance in prison so he knows he has support, he's not forgotten, and we also send them to the White House in support of this pending, pending clemency petition. And that's really important for somebody in prison to get that sort of thing, isn't it? Very much so. It, it helps lift their spirits, let them know that they're, you know, important, that they still matter. It's very sad. I, I know in his case and many people's cases who are incarcerated, it's, you know, they're gone out of sight, out of mind, and where are their friends? Right. Yeah, that can be a, that can be a, 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 a big uplifting experience for somebody who's treated like a number in a cage to be, have their humanity reaffirmed and know that people do love them and care about them. Um, so tell us, tell us about Lance Glore. Who is Lance Glore and what happened with Lance Glore? Lance Glore, um, first I'd like to point out to people that I have never met Lance in person. I've never heard his voice when I started advocating for him. We had never had any contact. His injustice, it just, it bothered me. And I began working in the legal recreational market of cannabis here in Washington state. And just about every day I'd be at work. And at some point it would pop in my head, you know, I'm doing the same thing that Lance was and I'm getting paid for it and going home every night. And he's in a prison cell. What Lance is guilty of is being involved in medical marijuana in Washington state and following the state law. The state had went after Lance to try to find something to prosecute him for, found nothing. They had a uh, joint task force that was state and fed. And when the state, you know, found they had nothing to charge Lance with, they handed evidence over to the feds to handle it. Yeah. And so, so um, what, was their, what was the purpose of them going after him in the first place? Well, this was back in uh, 2011 or 12. And at that time, there was a bunch of federal raids going on across many um, medical legal states at that time. And Lance just, for whatever reason I'm unsure of, was on their radar and they targeted him. Yeah. And he's got 10 years and he's, and he was, and he was arrested in what year? Uh, 2012 or 13. So he's got, what has he got? Two years left? Oh no, he's, he started his sentence 2015, I believe. And he's, he's on year four right now. He's what? He's on year four right now. Year four. Wow. First they drag you years through the court system before they even sentence you and then they put you away. So they really steal so many more years of your life. Steal your resources. Destroy your family. And that's what they call justice in America. Right. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. That's very. The sad part is, is um, Lance was, when he was, you know, after he was uh, sentenced, he asked if he could, you know, turn himself in and begin his sentence after his daughter, his only child's high school graduation. And they refused to let him go to her graduation. He turned himself in, a, a, I think it was about a week before that. And he's since missed her college graduation this year. Yeah. So when you're, when you're out doing this stuff and you know about these stories, how does it make you feel? Oh, it makes me feel a lot of things. Um, you know, I can't, I'm blessed I've never been in this situation of having to deal with this kind of injustice either for myself or a family member or even a close friend. 
but my heart goes out to these families who, you know, I read their stories on social media and hear about what they go through. And it just, it's heartbreaking and it's hard to imagine in this country that's supposed to be the land of the free, that people are actually being thrown in cages. Families are being torn apart over a plant that, that heals. It's just complete madness. Yeah. People used to, to, I mean, in America, I mean, the government and all the propaganda coming from them, they used to, they used to um, point the fingers a lot and mock Russia because Russia would have bread lines or because, you know, they had people in gulags in Siberia for um, being political dissidents. But they're doing the exact same thing here. Absolutely. It's kind of mind boggling to see people defend like the injustices on the hands of the government and not have learned a thing from history. Right. They don't learn anything and they don't really care to learn anything. It seems like to me a lot. Right. And it's just going to get repeated and then people, you know, are going to wonder how did we get here? Yeah. And the rest of us trying to figure out a way to get out of it. Yeah. So, so how can, is there an address people can write to and, and support Lance and send them a card or something? And um, how should, how should they make their voices heard? Um, if, if they want to get involved, if they want to do something to help out, and do something for Lance, what can they do in, in the immediate? Like, right, like they could just do it right now if they were listening, they could just sit down and do something. What could they do? There's a couple things they could do. If they're on Twitter, they could get on there and compose a tweet. Um, I support the pending clemency of Lance Glore. It's G L O O R, inmate number 44270. 086 clemency case number 44 I'm sorry I did not write that down right you're okay. gonna edit this you'll get it just that doesn't really... they can check out freelancegloor.com for more information um, emailing the White House is important too just something as simple of, as I support the pending clemency of Lance Glor and do you have an email for them at the White House? I do. It's whitehouse.gov forward slash contact. They can also contact the, um, the clemency attorney's mm -hmm. office, and that's justice.gov forward slash contact dash U.S. And I'll try and put all those links um, in when I um, when I when I when I put this up on YouTube so that uh, those links are, will be uh, in the description so people can see those. So. Thank you. Yeah. I, I wrote down his inmate number instead of the clemency case number. <laughs> so that's my bad. That's okay. We'll get it figured out and we'll put it there. Okay. 